Hello everyone. So today we're making my famous um, cabbage and dumplings with kabasi. Um, a lot of people have cabbage and noodles. It's definitely an old ethnic dish. The first thing I'm doing is I'm frying up some bacon. And I'm going to crisp up this bacon and again we're going to save the juice, the bacon grease, because we're going to fry up our onions in the bacon grease. So we'll be back in a little bit after the bacon's Okay, well we're back. In addition to the one-third package of bacon that we're going to need to, um, we're going to fry up and crisp, we're also going to need a package of kabasi, a large, a sweet onion would be better, I didn't have one, this is just a large cooking onion, and a head of cabbage. So these all are going to have to be diced up, so I'll be uh, dicing them up, and if you're a vegetarian, you could definitely use, um, you know, the vegan kind of uh, faux sausage or faux kabasi, that's not too bad. Okay, I'm going to dice all these up and we'll be back to put them all in the pan. And okay, and I wanted to give a quick demo because I think a lot of people might not know how to chop up cabbage. Um, this is the core. You don't want to use the core. I'll just show you. Just cut off like, here's the core. Just cut off a nice chunk. You know, like so. And I already have one here that I've started working on. And then for this dish, you just kind of want to do like sort of thin. Let's move this out of the way. You know, like this. So you end up with, you know, pieces like this. And they're going to shrivel up and cook down. But this is how you want them to, to do it. I'll do a little bit, another quick demo on that piece we just cut off. So you start with this big piece. And you just kind of go at it. Like so. And I kind of go at it like different angles. So it's almost like triangular uh, pieces. So this is it. And then I've cut up my onion also in similar size, nice big chunks. And then I'm going to do the uh, thing. I'll meet you back at the stove after we do the uh, kibasi. I'm going to start uh, chopping up the... I thought I'd give a quick demo on that. This thing comes in like a big tube sort of thing. I always cut the ends off. And, you know, I have dogs, so they're... They're always happy to have those little end pieces. You can throw them in if you want, though. But what I like to do with these, you want them kind of in even slices, but I like to get them kind of cutting on an angle. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be, but that's just the way I like to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this whole entire uh, link up, and if you could use a vegetarian or vegan type of uh, faux sausage in this for sure. And um, I'll be back. I'll meet you back at the stove, and we're going to start putting all the ingredients together. Hi, I'm back at the stove, and I'm heating up the bacon grease, and the bacon didn't really produce as much grease as I'd hoped, so I'm going to drizzle in a little bit of olive oil to compensate for that. And I want to just get so there's a nice coating on the bottom of the pan, like so. Okay, looking good. All right, so I'm heating this up. I'm going to crank this on a high heat. It's almost like a stir-fry in a way. I'm going to put in my one large onion. Sweet onion would be good, but I didn't have a sweet onion, so I just used a large one right out of the, the bag. And also, I'm going to put in right away my uh, chopped up um, kibasi. Now, again, you could use definitely a vegetarian or vegan alternative. And also, this whole dish could be vegetarian. Well, there's going to be an egg in the uh, dumplings. But other than that, just like with the German potato salad, how I would do it would take olive oil with the faux bacon bits, Cook the faux bacon bits, let them soak in the olive oil, and it does um, does a good job of substituting for bacon grease for some of these recipes. And then I would just continue on, then frying our uh, onion and frying our... I want to get like a little bit of a coating, a little bit of a brownness to this part of the, this fleshy part of the, uh, the sausage. Almost like a... Uh, like a charbroil, or just like a little bit of a coating on each, all this. And I'm going to cook these onions down until they uh, get to be soft. Then we're going to add the cabbage, and we're going to uh, cook the dumplings. We'll be back in a minute to add the cabbage. Okay, so I'm back, and then these, uh, these are nice and cooked. I'm going to lower this heat a little bit. They're just at the right spot. They're just starting to get brown, and the onions are still have a little bit of uh, crispiness, but they're getting soft also. So this is what I'm talking about, how I want to get this um, kibasi, maybe with a little bit of that, you know, that brown stuff, kind of. I don't know if you can see that. Kind of got some brownie. That's what I want. Okay, so uh, this is starting to stick to the pan. So, 
I'm actually going to deglaze the pan with a little chicken broth. Usually you don't put it in until later, but I'm going to put in a little bit right now because it's getting a little sticky. Again, you could just use water if you're doing it vegetarian. Okay, I've got all my cabbage. Now the cabbage is going to go in there. Raw cabbage. You don't boil it ahead of time. You don't do anything. It gets fried right in the grease with the onion and the meat. Now, um, this is going to wilt down and everything. So I want to fry this cabbage around and get a nice coating of the oil and the meat and everything. Now, some the bacon, I'm not going to return the bacon to it. A lot of people, after this is wilted, might um, return the bacon to it. I'm not going to do that because I think there's enough. The bacon grease is in here. You've got the kibasi or the sauce, you know, the sausage meat in there, and I think that's enough. I don't think you need a, a more bacon. Um, plus, then I can use those bacon bits. I'll crumble that up and make bacon bits for salads and for other things I want to cook. Okay, so this is going to wilt down. Water boiling, uh, cabbage is uh, cooking and wilting. I'll come back at the. We're going to show you how if, after this is completely a little bit coated and brown, I'm going to throw some more chicken broth in here too, and you might might want to put in some water. And then um, that's going to kind of steam it and, and even melt it down more. But it's not quite there yet. I'll turn the camera back on when I get to that point. It's a few more minutes. So we'll be back in a minute. This is the uh, homemade dumplings. Now, um, dumplings go with a lot of different dishes. And um, today I'm making it with the uh, dumplings with the kibasi and cabbage. I make a chicken and dumplings. It's basically one of those foods that are just one of those... Uh, poverty things too. It's just cheap to make. It's a basically a noodle dough. You use it to make pierogies and whatnot. Um, I, I kind of got away from the traditional, but usually you make a hole in the middle. Also, I'm going to add some salt. I'm going to add some regular, um, this is about two cups of flour, what I've got here. This is about a teaspoon of salt, and I'm going to use just the regular um, table salt, iodized table salt, because I think that um, I'm not even going to use that all. Oh, I used about a half a teaspoon to two cups of, uh, let me just dump it in here to get it out of the way. Um, I think it distributes it better. Although I use sea salt almost exclusively now, I think with this iodized salt in the flour, it kind of just gets in there a little better. So I'm just going to mix that around. And I still kind of sort of do it the old way, like the old, my, this is how the babushkas would do it. That's what my, my grandmother would say. And uh, you make a hole and you crack your egg in the middle. And then, I'm not sure I haven't done it this way in so long, but then I think you just keep adding the flour to the middle until you, you in adding liquid in the middle. I just kind of got away from that. I just put a, this straight, and I'm going to use, instead of water, I'm going to use chicken broth. So I'm just going to put a little bit of chicken broth in there to get started. I'm going to break up my egg, and I'm just going to start mixing it in there. I don't really go with the old babushka way. And babushka, my grandma always said that babushka means old lady. <laughs> um, Babushka is also the thing that they wear on their head, like a, a scarf or a kerchief. You wear it on your head and tie it under your chin. That's also a babushka. Now, if you're doing vegetarian, you definitely don't want to use the chicken broth. This is just something I've started to do lately. Um, you can definitely just use water, and that's the original recipe. Or you could, you know, put in a little bit of a... People put all sorts of things in dumplings. I used to put the dried... Um, Inst dried minced onions in it. People put uh, potato dumplings. You can put in, uh, you know, like riced, you know, shredded or riced potatoes. Oops, I'm getting a little flour all over. No biggie. Um, I'm going to keep going with this until I have a texture that I like. Um, now, if you're doing a, a noodle dough for like a pierogi, you would have to have, be, have it be rolled out. So you'd have to have it be able to be formed into doughs and, and like that. Uh, this is the same recipe, you know, it's like this would be probably, you would stop with the liquid about now if you were going to do some kind of a noodle or pierogi and you just flour this up and work it in and roll it out um, so you can fill it. But in this case with the um, dumplings, I'm going to go a little bit more uh, moist. Not too thin, it's, it's like a delicate balance, but I find with the dumplings, if you go a little bit more moist, you're going to end up with a fluffier, lighter dumpling. And so this is still a little thick. I think I'm just going to go even a little more. And it's, I don't know the measurements. It's not even about the measurements. It's about the, tec you know, the texture of looking at it. And you just got to kind of play it by ear. 
Okay, I think I'm about there. Yeah, this is good. So take a look at this texture. It's, it's moist. A little goo. It's thicker than pancake batter, that's for sure. It's definitely not that thin. Um, it's about like that. That's about how you want it. It's sort of gooey, gooey, sort of pliable. So when you get it to be about like this texture, then that's a good, t I, that's the texture that I like uh, for my dumpling dough. So you can play around with it a little bit either way, but I think this is really, this looks like about perfect. Okay, so we're going to make the dumplings. We've got a pot of water boiling, and we're going to drop these in the water and make our dumplings. So I'll meet you back at the stove. Okay, I'm back, and I've switched burners because I want to be able to get from my countertop into the water. The water is getting a nice boil. This is where I'm at with the... Um, this is all it cooks down. Not Well, you could cook it down as much as you want, but I still like my cabbage to have a little bit of crunch, but be soft. So it's shrunk down somewhat, and I've got it over here on a low heat. I've got this water really going, really boiling, and we're going to start to make our dumplings. Okay, so to make the dumplings, I, we, we made our batter, which is a nice uh, kind of this kind of a consistency, sort of gooey. And then we're just going to put them in the water, and as they float to the top is when they're done. Now, size-wise, that's totally up to you. Some people like really, really big dumplings. I like very small dumplings. So I'm just going to take, this is like a little teaspoon that you... Uh, you know, you stir your coffee with, and I'm just taking like about a half of one of those, and I'm just going to put it right in the water. And I'm going to do a whole bunch of them at once, really. Keep putting them in the water. And what's going to happen, how that you know that your dumplings are done, is that they're going to float to the top. So when they float to the top, it's time to get them out. And, um, you know, on this time, today I'm making the uh, kibasi with cabbage, but if I were making chicken and dumplings, I would be the same thing. I would have the pot of chicken and, chicken and dumplings right next to me, and as they were ready, I would just take them out and put them right in the pan. Okay, so I'm going to throw one more in, and then I think, because some are already starting to float to the top. I've got my slatted thing here. You need some sort of a slatted spoon. These are just as little, you know, like entrail things. Uh, so what? I'm going to throw them right in there. They're fine. As I said, I like smaller dumplings. Now also go along the bottom because they might be sticking to the bottom. I mean, they were in this case. I'm going to bring this right up. As you can see, like there's like three that are okay. They're ready to come out. And there's a couple that are still down there. They're not quite ready yet. I see it. that we just saw one just come up to the top. And then there's a couple down here, but they're not ready. So as they come ready, you just keep scooping them out with the thing like so and putting them into whatever you're using them for or you could just set them aside in a colander if you were going to make some kind of a, a different sauce later to put over them okay so now that I've gotten these ready um, dumplings too I and dumplings I also like to have at a later you know let them sit around because they're going to absorb whatever just like any noodle dish they're going to absorb whatever sauce or other flavors that you've put on them. So you're going to end up with a better tasting dumpling, I think, if you let it sit around and maybe warm it up the next day or something. But it's good to eat right now, too. So there you go. This is your basic dumpling. You can use this with anything. You can put potatoes in there. You could put cheese in there. You can put minced onions in there. You can put any kind of sauce you want over it. These are your basic Eastern European dumplings. Okay, so back to the uh, cabbage and noodles. I'm just I'm adding my uh, dumplings in. I'm going to add a. I'm going to turn the camera back on when they're all done. I'm going to turn this off the heat over here because this is definitely done. I don't want my cabbage to turn to complete mush. So I'm going to finish up my dumplings, get them all in the pan. Then I'm just going to pour the re remainder of this um, chicken broth in there and let it kind of steam. You could just maybe do a little bit of water. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, and I'm back, and I've got all my dumplings in my pan with my uh, cabbage and uh, onion, bacon grease, kibasi, and I'm just kind of kind of move it all around. And then the one last thing I'm going to do is I've just got a little bit of, I'm going to just uh, 
Give another little dousing of some chicken broth for the final touch. And here it is. And as I said before, I like to let this sit. Like, it's only like 12 noon. I'm going to let this sit for a few hours at least and let all the stuff like just kind of soak in there and I'll warm it up later. Comes back great in the microwave. I think with any kind of dumpling or noodle dish, the longer that it sits and it has a chance to absorb all the flavors and meld together, the better it is. So here you have it. Traditional Eastern European cabbage and dumplings. Enjoy.